It's a brisk day in October with a little rain falling down and I am thrilled because I found the turquoise table I've been hearing about here in Westboro at the home of Stephanie Stukleek and I'm looking forward to having a conversation with her about her work, her life and community. Hi Stephanie. Good morning. Hi, um, thank you for having me here at your home in Westboro at the turquoise table. Uh, Thank you, it's my pleasure and I'm very happy to do this. This, uh, <laughs> this is lovely and um, this kind of uh, the inspiration for asking you for an interview, mm -hmm. uh, the turquoise table is getting started in a little bit of fame and notoriety yes. uh, locally yes. that I heard uh, it, the turquoise table is on Facebook and mm -hmm. uh, I was curious about it and so you have said yes to an interview. Could you tell a little bit of the idea behind the turquoise table, why you have it out and why we are sitting in the rain <laughs> <laughs> doing this interview because I yes. uh, really wanted to show what it's about. Sure, thank you, I'd love to do that. So the turquoise table is actually a movement by Kristen Schell um, out in Texas. It started a few years ago, I'm not exactly sure how long ago. Um, but the idea behind it is that she noticed that our society was becoming very busy, like busier and busier and running kids to activities and so much on social media and not really connecting anymore. Mm, yeah. And so she decided to do something about it by taking her table and putting it in the front yard and painting it her favorite color mm -hmm. and thinking to become a front yard person. That's kind of the terminology of this. Front yard and, person. Yeah, becoming a front yard person and it's just kind of taken off. Um, as far as I know, it's not so popular yet in Massachusetts, but it would be nice to kind of spread the idea and build community that way. Yes, so. absolutely. Um, I'm sorry, where did it get started? In Texas. In Texas. Okay. It's a little bit of a different culture oh, than this. Are, so. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so um, have you heard of anyone else in Massachusetts doing this? Yeah, so I actually have a friend who um, has done it down on the South Shore. Mm -hmm. And I knew someone um, a few years ago in a Bible study who'd also done this, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure where exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, no. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, uh, it's very exciting and <laughs> I hope the word spreads because I think the intention sounds very important. It's uh, on the idea of what this uh, show is about and mm. getting to know one another uh, more, more, more deeply yes. uh, and uh, appreciating and understanding one another. Um, and uh, this, uh, this speaks to what I think is your um, sense of importance about community. Can you tell a little bit about why you're being brave, putting a, a table out here, <laughs> calling people from the street yeah. perhaps? Yes, so um, I was nervous to do it, to be honest, because I wondered myself, how does this look to live life in your front yard? And I'm still trying to figure that out. And it is, you know, I'm in a very kind of busy street in a way. So um, it is kind of feeling like you're kind of exposed, but at the same time, I love it. You know, I like to go out here and journal and, and I'm getting to know people walking by slowly with their dogs. And it's a nice feeling of being a part of the community and just being present. I think that's a big part of what makes community community is that you're present and you're taking time to slow down and be there for people. And that's, I think, what I'm trying to just try out in my life and, mm -hmm. and see if people resonate with that. Mm -hmm. so, well. Yeah. Uh, that it sounds like uh, something we need more of, mm. certainly. And um, there is a book under the table being protected <laughs> by the rain right now. But yes. are there anecdotes and stories by the author yes. about how that her experiences in meeting people? Absolutely. So mm. I really recommend this book, The Turquoise Table by Kristen Shell. It's like really a phenomenal book. And the story that she talks about in there. Um, it's actually a documentary by a woman in Prague and I actually saw the video because I went on a missions trip to the Czech Republic. I was there for five years teaching English mm -hmm. and when I was there for training I watched the same documentary that spoke oh. to her okay. and it's about a woman, an older woman in Prague who just opened up her home and heard people's stories and prayed with them and it was called the Ministry of Presence, the name of this documentary mm -hmm. and I love that. I love the idea then, I love it now. It's just, it's such a gift to sit with someone and hear their story mm -hmm. and to make time to be with someone and, and show that they matter you mm. know, and be present with them. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, uh, I will look for that film also. That uh, sounds like an important one for folks to see. Um, and uh, let's see, you're introducing more concepts here. 
but uh, one more question related to the table. Uh, why is community important to you? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, so I would say what life boils down to for me is love God, love people. Mm -hmm. And I think the purpose of all of it is just to have relationships and we're made to be in relationship. And we can't do that if we're so busy all the time that we're not sitting down together and doing life together. So um, it means being there for each other and accepting each other and just loving each other in our brokenness and in our mess and not trying to act like we have it all together and mm -hmm. just do life. So. That uh, sounds like an important guiding philosophy, and uh, it sounds like you are a person of uh, faith yes. uh, and perhaps of religion. Uh, can you tell me more about how yes. this intersects with your life? Sure, yeah. Um, I would not, I don't love the term religion mm -hmm. um, because for me it feels more legalistic. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that I am definitely a person of deep faith, that God plays a part in everything. It's the lens that I see the world from. Mm -hmm. So every decision, everything is filtered through my faith, if you will. And um, I became a Christian in college, mm -hmm. uh, at a church that I went to that I loved. And um, just kind of experiencing that kind of love really changed me and transformed mm -hmm. me. And so I feel like all of this comes from my heart of wanting to love people well, mm -hmm. the way I've experienced love from, from God. So. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, sounds like a wonderful, important experience for you. And uh, uh, from what I remember, you are also involved with a community church. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I go to Chapel of the Cross in Westboro, mm -hmm. and I lead the women's ministry there. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing, that we try to build community there. And we have something called Coffee Connections once a month, where we invite people in to connect and meet other women. And there's a time of um, like a story or testimony where women can talk about what um, God has been doing in their lives. And it's like an encouraging story, usually, with some discussion around that. Um, so anyone is welcome to come to those. And mm -hmm. it's another great opportunity to connect. Mm -hmm. So. And does uh, the church um, also go out into community and provide services? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. We love to serve. That's kind of the heart, I would say, behind this. This particular church especially is service. Mm -hmm. And so we do help in, in different ways around the community. And we're actually more of um, like a regional church. We're not mm -hmm. just in Westboro. The church itself is in Westboro, but people are, it's regional. People come from all over to this church. And um, yeah, I would. so we love to serve, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I would say, as as a uh, young young person, younger than myself, <laughs> and, um, how how do you see yourself going out in the world with this type of a philosophy? When uh, these days of society, there is a sense of division. There mm. is a sense with some people of turn off to uh, reference to faith and. Um, God or church and other people uh, with their own, you know, sense of what they think is right. Uh, how do you navigate that and who you are and yes. that you want to talk to everybody at the table? <laughs> That's a great question. So I think that everyone's story is important, you know, and I want to hear people's stories and I feel like, how do I explain this well? I feel like um, something our society is losing a little bit is to be able to talk about things respectfully and still disagree and love each mm -hmm. other. Yeah. And I think it's really important to be able to do that. That's what the table is about, like mm -hmm. the ministry of presence and coming together and hearing each other's story. Mm -hmm. And then as far as my point of view and my faith, I feel like it's important for me to live my life in a way that people might want to ask why I'm doing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and then I'm very happy to talk about my faith. Mm -hmm. But it's not something I want to push on other people, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. it's my responsibility to live my life a certain way mm -hmm. and have that be my story mm -hmm. that other people will hopefully want to know more about. Mm -hmm. Right. So. With, uh, I know that it seems a lot of, there's a lot of expression of folks feeling lost in some ways. Yes. So to have uh, people to know to go to um, with some steering sounds like a, an important um, thing within community without yeah. having um, beliefs pushed. Um, so thank you for talking about that uh, also as part of who you are and I know also connected to community is your work. 
Yes. Uh, you are a realtor. Yes. And uh, you do work in Hopkinton and beyond mm -hmm. in the Metro West, and, and yes. you start out living in Hopkinton also, so you know uh, the town and the surrounding towns well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how did you get involved in this type of work, and what is it doing uh, for your life and, and these areas of uh, priority for you, of values? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a God story, and it's a long story, so I'll shorten it, but it's okay. not something truly that I, I chose for myself. It's really yeah. God opened the door and I stepped into it, and I, I hesitated about it, honestly, at the beginning, because I had a lot of um, kind of limiting beliefs about what it meant to be in sales, mm -hmm. and I'd never considered a job like that. Mm -hmm. And the more I'm learning to be authentic in the role of this career that um, I feel like I'm being guided in, and what that looks like for me by being able to talk about community and use my different interests and my love for people. And I really see real estate also as a ministry. You know, I love it when I think about it like this and helping guide people through this very difficult time often in their lives and bringing art into it, which you know that I love the arts. I have a fine art degree. Um, so the more I bring all of that into my career, it feels very authentic to me and I'm enjoying it so much. It's, it's great. And just, of course, being out in the community as well and meeting people is wonderful. So it's a way almost to um, promote this idea of community, being able to use my voice as a realtor. Yeah, so, yeah that's, uh, that's a good, important spin uh, uh, viewpoint uh, on real, being a realtor on that work. And when you say authentic, Yes. So I feel like it's been very important for me to find a voice that's unique to me in real estate. Because I think that, again, I, I really had all these limiting beliefs about sales. And so I felt nervous to put myself out there. Because you really have to self-promote in real estate. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me a while to feel comfortable doing that. But when I talk about things that I love like this, mm -hmm. it's not a problem because I, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. So. Um, I feel like it's really who I am, that it's not just, huh. yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. or I used to think like ministry and real estate were two different things. They're not. Mm -hmm. Like I get to love and serve people through what I'm doing. You can so. be the same person no matter what the work is yes. and, and follow your calling. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sorry, did we finish your story of uh, your calling to do real estate work? As you referenced, it was uh, through God. Yes, yeah, yeah okay. I don't mind sharing that. So when uh, we moved back from the Czech Republic, I was there with my husband for five years. He was interested in um, investing in real estate. He's really into finance. It's his passion. And so um, <laughs> to me, it was crazy. I'd never considered anything like this. And we went to a Rich Dad, Poor Dad conference, if you're familiar with. No, it, it's no. a very good book about investing and kind of the entrepreneurial mindset versus the employee mindset. Mm -hmm. So we went to a conference and the speaker um, was saying that he was funding missions trips around the world. And I felt very called to missions. And I felt like God was saying to me that this was going to look differently than I had been thinking it was going to look. So to keep an open mind. And we started to learn about investing in real estate and taking courses on flipping houses and these things. This is actually a house that we renovated. It's, wow. This is a God story too, this uh -huh. house. Yeah, um, it's and lovely. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of fun. So um, we got prayer from a few different people we didn't know um, who prayed for us. And both times it was about real estate that they prayed for us about. We, we had prophetic words about real estate. Mm -hmm. that we were going to, or like that um, God was connecting things behind the scenes and at the right time the business would overflow and we would be radically generous and mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, I was sobbing when uh -huh. I heard these, you know, so really, I didn't choose it. Yeah. It chose yeah. me. Uh -huh. So it's pretty wild. And, I'm, and we see things happening. happening. And yeah. And surrender to That's exactly it. Yeah. I feel like when I surrender my life, God opens doors and I just walk through them. And even if I'm scared, I'll mm -hmm. do it. And it's amazing to see what he does. Yeah. Well, I um, am happy for you and of these good stories in your life. Mm -hmm. And I know we had talked about that this is not uh, of trying to be convincing to other people of other perspectives, mm -hmm. but that this is who you are yeah. and this is part of your story. Yeah. And um, it is uh, refreshing to hear. And I know, uh, Peter, you mentioned your yeah. husband. <laughs> He's from the Czech Republic. Yes. Uh, and you have a story of how you... Uh, came about being over there and meeting him. Yes. <laughs> he came into your life. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Yep. So uh, my husband, Peter, is Czech. And after college, I went there on a missions trip. Um, it was supposed to only be a year. And I was going to teach at a Christian language school and help with different churches there. And, um, 
my, so my job was to teach business English and I was contracted out to various businesses and my husband was my English student. Ah. That's how we met. So I ta that was a perk of the job there for, <laughs> for him to have English lessons with native speaker and uh -huh. it just worked out. So we got married about a year later and I stayed for another four years with him and started a business and it's a lot of fun. Wow, yeah. how about that? <laughs> Well, that's a beautiful uh, beginning <laughs> story, yes. and um, sometimes we do a little bit of interaction here, mm -hmm. uh, where I get to be the student and learn uh, skills or talents from people in a very bumbling beginner way. Sure. So, how about if you teach me a few words, a few Czech words, uh, as teacher? Sure. Uh, I can be in Peter's shoes or your student's <laughs> shoes back there. Sure. I'll yes. try my best. It's not. It's not my strength. I know that. Czech isn't my strength. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a very hard language, but uh -huh. well, um, you were teaching English I'm, also, yes. so that's uh, yeah. But you do know the language. I do you know so. are a linguist of two languages. Um, I speak Czech a bit. Yes, mm -hmm. enough. I can teach you a few beginner okay. words. Yes. Um, so one fun thing is ahoy. Like we would say about pirates, it actually means hello in Czech. Oh. Ahoy. Ahoy. So, ahoy. Yep. All that's right. like the informal way of saying hello. The formal uh -huh. way is dobrý den. All right, that one requires more <laughs> concentration. Yes, so you have to roll your R, though. You have to roll your R, okay. Dobriden. Dobriden. Do that's good, okay, yeah. That's <laughs> and that again means? Uh, like good day or hello. Good day or hello. Mm -hmm. Dobriden. Okay, yep. and that's okay. <laughs> One more. That's good. How about one? <laughs> so, a tricky one, uh, but a fun oh, one, mm. is, so ice cream, Yeah. I like this word, in Czech is smirzlina. Smears Lena. Yes, that was good. Because I like ice cream, so right. that one was easy. <laughs> it's an important word, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> How yes. is ice cream over there? It's good. It's, it's uh -huh. good. They have kind of like gelato y ice cream. Oh, yeah. It is good. Uh -huh. And they have fun flavors like hazelnut. Uh -huh. It's my favorite. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so, well. I can tell you are a good teacher, <laughs> uh, uh, that there's understanding and humor uh, also, yeah. mm -hmm. and we are doing it for fun, but uh, so coming back here yes. afterward, you said you were over there five mm -hmm. years, uh, Yes. and um, so then how was life here, uh, readjusting? Mm. You came right to Alpindon? Um, yes, pretty mm. much. Well, we were um, for a few weeks with my parents, so I'm from Westboro originally. Mm -hmm. I grew up five, ten minutes from yeah. here. A true neighbor. A true, yes, <laughs> true neighbor, yes. Oh. So we uh, moved back to Hopkinton because my husband got a job at Dell EMC, where yeah. he works still, mm -hmm. um, and we've loved it there. Like We really loved where we lived, and we were right downtown in the center. And what I love about where I live now and where I lived in Hopkinton, in the center like that, is how walkable everything is because mm -hmm. I'm used to that from living in Europe mm -hmm. you know we walked yeah. everywhere we didn't have a car so for me you were in the center in Hopkinton when yes you were there. Yeah. yeah so it was wonderful to go down to the common and mm -hmm. bittersweet and I hope mm -hmm. soon. And, uh -huh. you know I just I love that the slower marathon. pace yes yes mm -hmm. So I feel like having those intentional times of slowing down and again, like being able to meet people when you're walking, I love it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's nice. And here you are again to bring it out uh, walk for walkers and yourself. You could, uh, the center is not far. It's not far, no, less than a mile. So yeah. and it's I, great. I, I hear that more as a priority with people these days mm -hmm. wanting to be closer uh, without even maybe going as far as you are. Um, <laughs> Hearing that reference to the importance of um, community, uh, yeah. community, and being uh, more involved with one another, and being closer to the access rather than having to drive far distances. Right. Um, so uh, you are ahead of your time. <laughs> <laughs> so and. Um, have you done much travel uh, since then? Not much. Mm -hmm. I hope more. Something um, you're aspiring to. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. We both love to travel, my husband and I. And we traveled a lot when we were living abroad. But since we've been back, um, only local trips like to New Hampshire. Yeah. We love New Hampshire. Yeah. But we did go back to visit his family once, mm -hmm. which was nice. But we're hoping to go to Thailand in February. Wow. I'm, okay. Yes, working hard for that. So. You have certain work goals in order to be yeah. able to consider that, Exactly, right? uh, yes. You have to sell so many houses? Yeah, or? yep, yep. Uh -huh. So that's, that's really how we do it. So mm -hmm. we are big goal setters, my husband and I. We, I love to do that, like mm -hmm. every year kind of revisit what are our goals, what do we have to do to make that happen, and go for it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's good. Well, so that's great, there. and I hope you do go to Thailand. Thank um, you. That would be very exciting. Um, 
and in <laughs> thinking about goals and what you have to do, the houses, number of houses you have to sell, um, being in thinking about being in your shoes, what what are, what are maybe one or two uh, words of advice or, or tips for folks for uh, oh. these days um, selling a house, uh, being successful at that. Yes. So I love that question. So I actually have an article that I wrote recently. Oh. Um, yeah, uh -huh. it's just in the basket under the table. But <laughs> it will come <laughs> out when it clears. Yeah, so when it clears, <laughs> we'll bring it out. But um, one thing that I think that makes me a little different is how much I focus on relationships yeah. instead of transactions in real estate. Because for me, again, it is about relationships, love God, love people, everything. So I feel like one benefit of, um, so someone who's thinking of selling in the next one to three years, let's say, I think a lot of times people will wait until they think like they're really ready to go and move before yeah. they talk to their realtor. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. No. <laughs> I do, no. Yeah, uh -huh. it's better to plan. I'm a planner. If you can and you know it's coming, uh -huh. talk to a realtor early. Mm -hmm. You know, really call me up early. Like so, I, I really one to three years before you're ready to go. Wow. Mm -hmm. And. Um, especially if you're a seller and I'll tell you why mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can do to your house mm -hmm. to prepare mm -hmm. and certain updates you can make and things to do that will bring in a return or not bring in a return I've okay. seen that too that yeah. sellers sometimes will do things and think the house is going to be worth X amount more when it won't mm -hmm. um, and it's different if you're doing an improvement because you think that you're going to enjoy it that's different yeah. but yeah. Um, you know if you're doing it for resale really get some advice from a professional yeah. early um, and then too, you can enjoy the work that you're doing to That's your house. Right. I hear it all the time, like people are doing work right before they sell and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I wish I had done this earlier. Well, you can if you, mm. you plan for it and yeah. you talk to someone and I'm happy to do that. So oh, that, yeah. is, uh, that is good advice and uh, something that I hear and am aware, yeah. you know, we keep putting off uh, our yeah. Are to do things, but wouldn't it be nice if we could enjoy them for right. the time we exactly. are here? Exactly. Everybody if says it. to invest, right? Yeah. Uh, so that is, yeah, that's a reality. That is good to know. I guess perhaps people might be afraid of being pushed mm -hmm. to sell, but yeah. it sounds like with your style of uh, how the relationship is important, that is something that you see. Uh, uh, having good consequences for people who are selling their home to look ahead yes. and and see what is is advisable to change and, and not. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just even that or also to get a good sense of the timeline. I think a lot of times people don't look at that. Like if you're going to line up buying and selling, if you, you know, want to purchase another home, like if you don't know what's going on in the market, you might not realize it's really beneficial sometimes to sell first and go into temporary housing or all of those options are things that are good to discuss if you take the time to think mm -hmm. in advance mm -hmm. so oh that's good yeah. advice um and uh let's see i know you said you uh you are interested in art you are an artist yes. uh, <laughs> when you can when mm -hmm. you have time yes ha what are you doing with that these days? How does that weave into your work and your life? Yeah, I love that. So I do not paint as much as I used to, and I do miss it. We, we talk about it every time we see each other. Painting on canvas. Yes, painting on canvas. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's going to be a season for that again. But for me now, it comes out more through real estate. Um, I love, love, love preparing the house to sell. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. staging, staging and yeah. yeah, I have a really high standard for how I present my listings with like gorgeous photos and mm -hmm. um, it's so much fun for me to see the transformation. Ah, yeah. So it comes out in uh -huh. that way. So the house becomes your canvas. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. and it's, it really helps the seller. Like best foot forward, first impressions matter. It's really what helps to sell the house. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, that is um, a unique uh, perspective. I think that doesn't always happen mm -hmm. um, when yep. selling a house. To think of it that way as as uh, presenting beauty and catching the eye. Exactly. Uh, as soon as I know that was what happened in our case, you know, just sort of walking in and, and love at first sight, <laughs> right? Um, so, yes. Uh, very important and uh, and so uh, I hope that painting will mm -hmm. come back to you also, <laughs> but it sounds like you practice art in other ways. Yeah. And how about for your uh, hopes and dreams, you have Thailand, you have a number of houses yep. Yep. to sell in this current year. How about beyond mm -hmm. that for yourself and for 
uh, as you mentioned, a sense of uh, feeling interconnection to everyone mm -hmm. uh, uh, as all one family and, mm -hmm. and from your perspective of God also, mm -hmm. what is your hope uh, and wish for our whole world? as well as yourself because mm. we have mm, maybe two minutes two minutes <laughs> okay so two big questions okay that's a big question so well personally i hope to be able to travel more to experience yeah. more of this beautiful world for mm -hmm. sure i feel very surrendered to just whatever god has for me so i hold it all loosely so mm -hmm. i i have goals and plans and things but whatever he has for me is going to be ultimately better than what i planned so i don't think about mm -hmm. that too too much like, again i just feel like when he opens the door i'm going to walk in it mm -hmm. Um, and as far as like our community and, you know, I, I do hope that we get more connected and we slow down mm -hmm. and just be intentional. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's more it. I feel like more and more we have so much noise coming at us through mm -hmm. social media and the news and just to slow down and be intentional about where do we want to go in our lives and what do we have to do to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, the table's just like a small way of being intentional mm -hmm. and showing that having so. a place to go to get away from the noise and the division yeah uh, and uh, yes the interruptions maybe mm -hmm. the too much chatter yeah uh, that can make our minds uh, very upset mm -hmm. and now we know that we can come to the turquoise table yes, you're always in Westboro <laughs> <laughs> and slow down a bit and talk with our neighbor Stephanie yes so, okay. <laughs> yes uh, well, that is great advice and uh, best wishes in your work and your Thank hopes you. and your dreams and and your well wishes and, and sending love to the whole world uh, because uh, we do need it. I agree and uh, I appreciate the time that you took out of your busy work very much. So thank you so much, thank neighbor you. Stephanie. <laughs> thank you for having me. This is great.